I will start today BOV training. This will be the first training and it will cover the valuation approach using market comparison or the market approach. I will explain to you about broker opinion of value. BOV sometimes is referred to as a best guess based on market data and analysis. In this training agenda, I will explain my presentation by divided into three main points. First is the concept and basic principle of valuation. Second is valuation process, data collection, and site visit. And third is the BOV report. Not only explain how the value is calculated, but we need to know the basic and principle of valuation itself. One thing that we need to bear in mind that BOV is an opinion, is our opinion as consultant based on our analysis and knowledge. So BOV is not what seller, buyer, or any party has to write on the BOV report. And also for formal valuation report must be conducted by Professional Public Registered Valuer or KJPP in Indonesia. They will take many more steps and data, which is strict to the guidelines, while the BOV is more simple and not too detailed. So we need to inform our client to use registered valuer for formal valuation report. Value is an opinion of the economic benefits of opening an asset or the most probable price to be paid for an asset in an exchange. Therefore, value is not a fact. Transacted price is a fact. Cost to build is a fact. But value is opinion. For example, when we valuing property, everyone can have a different opinion based on professional judgment and knowledge. We need to understand the difference between price, cost, and value, so we don't get mixed with that. Price is a term used for the amount as offered or paid for a good or service. For example, someone want to sell their property, so they have the expected price, and the agent will mention this as the asking price. And this is not what we call value, because it depends with the owner situation. If you need money, the price can be much lower. If he doesn't need money or just want to taste the market, he can set a high asking price. Cost is the price paid for goods or service or the amount required to create a pro or produce the good or service. And value. Value is an economic concept referring to the price, most likely to be concluded by the buyers and sellers of a good or service that is available for purchase. This image is captured in Jalan Mampang. If you see the building on the left hand side, this is just for example. The two horse statue on the top probably will cost the building owner a lot of money. If the statue is designed by a famous designer, and installed with a very good quality structure, like you can see, is attached in the building. So when the owner built this building, it probably cost him a lot. The question is, does the horse statue will be available to the buyers if they want to purchase the building? I don't think so, because the statue only will be available for the owner, but not for the most of the buyer. So keep in mind that cost to develop or the construction cost is not totally represent the property value. The next step is the valuation process, data collection and site visit. The valuation process in this presentation I put on the three step. First is data collection. 
is the process when we gathering all information and ask the owner before we go for the site visit. I will explain more in my next slide. Second is the site visit and we can do it also by doing virtual site visit. For example, we can using Google Street View. And third is analysis and preparing the BOV report. What we need to ask to the client in this slide, this is a common information that we require. The legal document comprising the land title certificate, development permit or IMB, and property tax or SPPT PBB. Data regarding the building such as building layout, building specification, tenant rental, feasibility study, or business plan. And third is financial information. If possible, to get three to five year historical financial statement with detailed information about the operating expense. This is the sample of land title certificate. On the top left corner, is the type of the land title certificate. This is HGB or Hak Guna Bangunan or Right to Build. It can be also SIM or Right of Ownership. This is the date when the certificate is issued. This is the land size based on BPN or National Land Agency Measurement. And also important on the bottom of the left side of the certificate. This will show the information whether the land title is pure HGB or is HGB on top of government land. We call it HGB on the top of HPL. This page will show you what happened to the land historically. For example, when the land title used for collateral or when the land is purchased by the current owner, it will show in here. And also important is the land layout drawing. With this, we can know the land shape. Some big parcel of land has a lot of land title certificate. So we need to make sure that each land is adjacent one and another to make sure the land is solid not scattered. This will give a lot of impact to the land value. For doing that, I'm using AutoCAD when I combine each land title certificate. You can also use another software to help you like Microsoft Visio or you do it manually. When we draw the land layout, we also compare it with information from special planning drawing. So we will able to know if the land will be deducted by government for road widening or not. In Jakarta, you can use this link to find all the information like zoning, building intensity, etc. The other way to make sure is open website from BPN, the National Land Agency. It will show you the position of the land title, the shape and the land title type. If it's blue, it's HGB. If it's orange, it's HAKMILIK or right of ownership. If it's gray, it can be unregistered or they don't have the update yet. Site visit, based on data and information we got previously, our objective is to make sure all the information is correct and to get more finding about the property. We need to find out the physical condition, shape, size, elevation, topography, counter, and property adjacent. For surrounding area, the regional regulation we can find out in the city planning office. The existing use, if the property word is land only, 
the existing building can be calculated as a cost because we need to demolish the building. For the land improvement, is the land have surrounding fence, pavement, etc. This is the sample a couple of months ago when I visited Palembang. This photograph will show you the property adjacent, the road condition, the adjacent property to the site, and the view from the land. When we inspect the building, not vacant land, this is the site visit objective. The building specification, type of building, construction, number of floors, size, utilities. The building physical condition, is it well maintained or not? The existing building, is it vacant or used differently from the purpose? The rental rate, occupancy rate, tenant roll, general operational condition. Not only that we need to gather market comparable in the area, it will be great if we can get information of transacted price. In remote area, it will be good to visit district office to find out the land price, because sometimes Pak Lura or the sub-district head also act like a broker to help selling the land. This is the sample data information I collect from the comparable when we preparing the BOV. It's better to call or contact the seller by ourselves so we can dig more information and understand more about this property, comparing to ask somebody to make the call. When we doing site visit, try to understand the area because the surrounding affect the way we think and feel. From this area, from this image, we can check that all the cable is above the ground. The drainage system is below or under the road. You can see the road traffic in front of the property. We can see also the adjacent property. Sometimes, to estimate the road wide, usually a car or minivan have 2 meters wide. So we can assume how many cars will be fit in this road to get approximately, approximately road wide. Try to walk along the fronting road to get information of property on market. You can see also the coordinate of the link. Just copy it and it will be useful when we want to prepare market comparable map. Comparable map is a must. You will able to compare each data you have with subject property by looking to the map. I'm using Scribble map to do that because I can save the drawing, measure, and take notes. After we gather all data and information, we go to the next step to calculate the value using valuation approach. There are three approach that commonly use. The market approach, a valuation approach which provide an indication of value by comparing the subject asset with identical or similar asset for which price information is available. Second, the income approach, is a valuation approach that provides an indication of value by converting the future cash flow to a single current capital value. And the third is cost approach. It's a valuation approach based on the economic principle that a buyer will pay no more for an asset than the cost to obtain an asset of equal utility, whether by purchase or by construction. We go more detail to the market approach. There is three step: data, collect, data collecting, adjustment, and indicative value. Like I mentioned previously, 
Comparable map will help you a lot to analyze the location. For an example, in this comparable map, we can recognize the property which sits on the main road and the property that more close to the toll road. This is for example. Take the picture of each comparable is also necessary. You will able to gather many information from the image, such as the road wide, drainage system, etc. I will share my working paper in the Excel spreadsheet to you by email. And this is a standard template when I calculate using market approach. In this section, we need to put information about subject property and all the information or notes that we need to show. This section will show you all the information from the comparable data. Some data is land only and some data have building on the top of it. We need to put many information possible. In this sample, we want to find out the indicative land price of the comparable. So we deduct the building from the selling price to get the land price. And the final step is doing the adjustment. What you need to understand that we are comparing the data with subject property. The element of comparison can be as follow. The land title. Is our comparable have a land title registered in BPN or not? If our property have a land title, for example, right to build, and our comparable is not registered yet, so we need to add or give a plus to the adjustment. Sale price for residential will be expensive when applying bank mortgage. So this is the adjustment for term of financing. Sales condition. For example, somebody buy a house from his dad or he borrow money and finally sell the property to the lender with a discount price. So we need to aware of that and we need to do the adjustment. Expense after purchasing. Market condition, time transaction. When the transaction is happen, we can use inflation as a benchmark. Location. I break it down to couple of category like situation, access, view, surrounding area. Below is another adjustment. I will give you the download link to download the training of the market approach worksheet I'm using in this training. If you have any question, feel free to drop me an email or text me through WhatsApp. My number is 0812 or you can send me an email. I will post another training video to value the property using the income approach. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video. Bye.